iOS 8 updated. What's that sound? That that's the that's the sound of progress. <laughs> Doom. Dark suit acquired. The damaging effect. So well, yeah, whatever. iTunes updated. iTunes updated. Great. Now we can delete the music directly off of your computer. Yeah. Cause that's what I wanted. Better commentary. Okay, let's see if we go backwards and forwards in time. We're backwards. <laughs> let's go. To, yeah, let's go in the direct, the correct direction of time. I heard. I'm totally Here we go, not gonna Samus. Do, This is totally gonna be unhelpful because it's gonna be so vague. But I remember seeing something recently, and basically it's like something. It was something to do with time, and apparently it's pear shaped, and apparently that's why it only goes one direction. So. I guess no space, uh, space, no time travel. I know that was really helpful. Punch! Air shape. <laughs> Consume with the arm cannon. <laughs> yeah, that was totally unhelpful because I couldn't remember any of it. But apparently, something relating to time is pear shaped. Therefore, this causes time to only go in one direction. Therefore, no time travel. Or so they say. But it's maybe instead of time travel. Instead of time travel, what about multi-universe travel? Because you could screw up their universe and have no issues about yours. I don't know. That's too, that's too science. Yeah. Well, then again, it also goes back to you can't... If you were to jump universe, you probably wouldn't be able to find your original one anymore. Just because exactly. if there's an infinite amount of universes, that means you'd have to input an infinite amount of numbers or an infinite you... amount of factors to get back into your original if the theory's correct, then... Yep. <laughs> so that would make jumping... Yeah. If you jump once, you're pretty much boned. <laughs> Don't jump universe, it's good. It's dangerous. Yeah, you jump once, and... It's not so easy, like Samus makes it look, where you just, you know... Push a <laughs> Later, button. taters. <laughs> Did you just ditch us? Wow. Sam wanted to fight. <laughs> oh, fucking! Let's just all go back into goo pile. Let's all goop each other. <laughs> Don't goop. Yeah, they were all in one pile. Don't forget about that. <laughs> oh, I remember when we left off. We were talking about bosses, but we think we pretty much covered that. Let's talk about something that we haven't talked about yet. The style. Yeah, and how the art. I noticed the difference between the, this one and the other one. Like the text, I know that in the first one, like in the, actually in the second one, as you notice, everything looks a lot like, like it's actually got shading and whatnot on the actual textures as opposed to uh, Prime 1 where all, most of the shading and whatnot came from lighting. I don't, I'm not very well familiar with uh, graphical things. Is that considered an upgrade or downgrade? Uh, it depends. Like this one, uh, it works good because everything's a lot more, everything's a lot darker and, and it works well with this atmosphere. Whereas the other one worked well with, with uh, more natural looking stuff. So, and this might sound strange because I don't know if there really is any real differences between Prime One and Prime Two, engine like artistic style really. Art style definitely. Okay, you could definitely you see so. it in the uh, pro in the various suit. Okay, I guess you're like right. In, that, okay. This one's a lot more slimmer, and the other one, the other one was a bit more chunkier, and as you can tell, it looked a lot more metallic. Whereas this one looks like it's seen a bit of stuff. It's not as bright and shiny as it used to be. It's more worn. Yeah. So I will agree. I think you know I don't mind Samus's quite a bit. I hate dark. Dark. dark oh. Uh, anyway, yeah. I kind of liked. I did, oh, let me phrase that. I don't mind uh, Samus's um, larger uh, sort of various suit and suits in Prime One. They they would definitely seemed just bigger. Yeah, everything was a, the suit was a lot more beefier, and in yeah. this game, it's they slimmed it down. I but I I guess I I do like this version better. I think it's probably more probably more. Well, realistic. It's not realistic. Somewhat of a disputable term. I mean, 
Well, it looks like something a woman would fit into, as where the other one looked like something a guy would fit into. You know, it meant, the other one could, was a little bit more mech suitish because of how big it seemed. Or at least the various the power suit fit better. I think that was the thing, because the power suit was in the game. Um, once you got the various suit, it just got really big. In private, yeah. I mean. I think that's yeah. why. Well, as even with the suits in this game, as you can tell, it looks a lot, a lot more slender. Every all the suits look a lot more slender in this game, even the Varia. Which That's... again makes it look like, uh, yeah, a woman could be in there. Right. And I noticed that the shoulders aren't as broad anymore. No, they're not. I think the. Yeah, I I like this one. Um, Corruptions is pretty much the same, uh, just slightly upgraded graphically. Um, yeah. What I was gonna say is, is I do like. I generally like the style of Prime 1 better, but that's I'm going to chuck that completely to personal preference. I'm not saying it is better from, a, from an artistic standpoint. I think it's a personal preference. I'm pretty sure the uh, like the first one, like I said, the uh, the way the art style went, everything wasn't as shaded, and like uh, it's hard to tell, but I know the difference right away. I think I just Prime don't like the Luminoth was... architecture as much as um, the Chozo architecture. Yeah. Yeah, because there was a lot more Chozo stuff, but in Metroid Prime 1, I could see right away with... Like, that's why it looks so good today, being a, what, 2002 game? 2002... I think it's 2002. Or 2001. Either way, something very early. And that mainly has to do with the lighting and the textures. Like, I looked at the models, the models are quite basic, but they've just been done quite well. The artists were talented. Well, remember what I said, I said this during the Metroid Prime season, was that I think Metroid Prime, which was basically the same time as Halo 2, looks way, way better than Halo 2. But I did explain that it's because the way the Metroid... Le the Metroid levels of design, you know, each room is technically a loading screen. Um, yeah, and at most you'll ever have two rooms open at once. And so, um, each room can be incredibly detailed because of that. And they it just, also they just have really they have really quick loading screens uh, between each one, and so most of the time you don't have to worry about actually, you know, like, well, there are some rooms where you have to wait for the doors to open. Which is annoying. But you don't exactly know that that's the loading screen until you... That's like a meta-knowledge. You don't find that out when you play it the first time. You find that out years later. Yeah, you have to actually search up and like, Oh, wow, it... This was, uh... Maybe yeah. the well-informed person who's really in... Who's, like, knows these things might be like, Ah, it's a loading screen. But we were all really uninformed back in the two, early 2000s. Oh, yeah, man. Jeez, like, back then... Like... We didn't know how nothing worked. Yeah, all I know is that Lego, Lego was awesome, school sucked, and uh, <laughs> and video games, son. <laughs> video games when... And uh, who cared about homework? No, yeah, it was, definitely not it was me. the end of 2002. <laughs> uh, in North America, and then it bled over to 2003 in, like, Australia and Europe and Japan. Space G-string. <laughs> I mean... <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> Oh gosh. Yeah, oh yeah, you gotta summon these powers. You have to get. You really have to throw some effort in it. But Samus's trower face right now is just. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as funny, to, you know, the, all the times later. Yeah. Misses that. Oh, this could be milked Misses that out of nowhere. Oomph. Yeah. But I'll have something <laughs> next time. <laughs> Antenna activated. Oh, look at that, we got Shaw TV. Or how's the satellite reception out here? <laughs> it just needed, a uh, that thing. <laughs> so, do you, what do you think of, what do you think of the art style here in Prime <laughs> 2? Do you like it better than Prime 1's? Or are they equal, just different? They're good in their own ways. Like, the... The Luminous stuff looks way different than the Chozo stuff. Which is good. That means it wasn't just uh, an asset reuse. I think things look a lot more vicious in this game. 
as opposed to the first. Hey, yeah, Samus. Nice job, you got the cable running. I hope you almost can join my stream. I'm looking for more viewers. Later, Tata. Oh, oh, you know what's important? There's an exclamation mark. This temple's energy has been restored. Just in case you missed it. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know what that was doing. Yeah, other than giving you most free t cable. Like, you almost probably looked up like, hey, she got it. Sweet, I get, I'm gonna get prime time. Yes, yes. The, the actual plot, Yumos just wants free television, because the ing pay for it. <laughs> He's just trying to jack into the ing's cable service. <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, before we continue on with our discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Pancake room. Pancake room. I'm about to inform you what basically the rest of this episode will consist of when it comes to there's an invisible wall there. I think that's the first Metroid invisible wall ever. Uh, I bet you there's invisible walls at the top of the levels, but I don't know of any way to get up there. But anyway, um, welcome to the Wanderings of Samus for the rest of this episode, essentially. Other than our conversation, the gameplay in the background. I go and search of power-ups. Oh, you man, this one's going to be a long You will one. see me succeed. You will see me... Find purple doors, and I'm like, nope, can't go that way. Because <laughs> they have a very specific feature. I need to shoot missiles at them. Multiple, Multiple. missiles. I need a multi-missile system. Also, there's a bug problem. Not bomb gu uh, not spider guardians. Thankfully not spider guardians. I don't know, it's not a tough boss, it's just time consuming. Only, Especially when you get to the... U only the very last... That was the half pipe one, right? Mm, no. I forget if there was well, a half pipe in it. Yes, kind of. I think. I was about to say no, but like there are two half pipe sections in this boss fight. See, the very beginning of this game, and especially during Aegon, it, it's agonizing. Well, not a totally agonizing, but it's just boring. This is quite drab and boring. It Whereas when you always, get... always a very drab place to start. The... You know, okay, let's talk about let's talk about this a little bit. Um, the pacing of the game, I feel, is really. <sighs> if, you, if you understand what that sound effect was supposed to mean. Yeah, the uh, the sort of this. Well, this is uh -huh. a bonus. I say this is a bonus, but for most people, this might be an essential upgrade to get. What that. Is? What I'm doing tank? right here, this, I'm going to get an energy tank. Um, do I fail? I fail. What? What? Another two minutes or one minute. Anyway, so the pacing of Echoes is also. It sounds like I really don't like this game, LJ. Almost. Well, that's because, uh, like everyone, the uh, the first and third one's the best for them. But I'm not so much. I'm not very keen on the third game. Like I said, I I have not really replayed it, so I need to redo it. When I redo it for this, I'll definitely have a good opinion on it again. Like, and not good as in like I like it, but like well, I did really well the first time I did this, but now I'm <laughs> <laughs> kind of failing. I'm, I'll have a more well-informed opinion uh, when I replay it, because well, obviously it'll be completely fresh. Funky fresh. Fresh. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, 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 bow. Keep getting distracted by my own self. Yeah. Yeah, I have that problem too. <laughs> I'm just so entertaining to myself. I thought a burp was coming. Um, anyway, so yeah, the pacing. Uh, the first part is quite slow. There's nothing really interesting to look at. And anything else? I think that's pretty much it. It's just boring to look at. Then Torvis is better. It's but a I little actually bit interesting. Like, I actually, you know, I like the Under Temple, but I dislike how because of the whole light and dark world features, half of Torvis has to be the temple. There can't be more of it. Yeah. 
And what I find is that the, uh, like, with the Dark World, even though you're in, like, Dark Torvis or Dark a- a- uh, Aegon Waste, you know, all the Dark World places just pretty much blend in with yeah, each other. Yeah, they do. I And I really don't like how, because of the fact that they're the, they're Dark like World a equivalents, champ. the layouts of the rooms are almost always essentially the same, so you don't feel like you're going to new places as much. You just don't. It doesn't feel as different as knowing you're in a completely different area. It's like... It's like if Fandrana drifts. You know how they had the two sections with the two slightly different themes? Yeah, you had the Imagine normal area. if you only had the first section of Fandrana drifts and the other section didn't exist. And so instead of the other section of Fandrana drifts... The you depths, just be doing backtracking? You just had a corrupted version, essentially. Which is essentially what is going on here in Echoes. Hmm. That's it. And so it just doesn't feel like it's different. Yeah, it's, uh... This game's just... I it's still not, find this elevator. It's not a bad ridiculous. game, but it's very tough to get through for a lot of reasons. I think it's especially hard to replay. Like the first time through, when you're playing it blind, you might, you might, and you really like the Metroid games, you might be going because you're just like you're curious to see what's around the corner. But for me, it's always been kind of hard to replay, despite the fact that I have replayed it like two or three times, surprisingly. Mostly because I always try to complete it, but I never end up doing that. Hmm. I want a hundred percent. Like the scans, like I've 100 percent of the scan in Prime One, but I've never done it in Prime Two. It's always something I forget. Oh, cool fact! Uh, a little late, but it, you can scan the Omega Pirates missiles, and it'll just give you some like, "This is the Omega Pirate." <laughs> That's it. It doesn't and also for some display re- incorrect uh, images. Yeah, it shows pictures of the uh, parasite. Like, wonder, uh, wonder if the parasite queen's images are like. At the top of the hex, hexadecimal storage order. <laughs> that kinda might like, be kind of like in Pokemon. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if they still. I. D- I bet you now. Nowadays they. Uh, I was like, can I pull that up? I don't know if I can. I. I think nowadays Pokemon stores the Pokemon uh, hexadecimally um, in memory storage by a uh, by the order in the in the Pokédex. Hmm. I. I don't know that, but I'm gonna guess. Because that was, that was the big thing when people figured out um, uh, where the where the Pokemon values were stored in the game's memory. Um, they noticed uh, that they were in different orders than the Pokédex, which basically led people to assume what time they were um, actually entered into the game's coding. Uh, so leading basically to when Pokemon, the original 150 that did make it into the game, um, actually were put in. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Which also, there's also some, there's also some gaps. Like, there's some, there's some gaps in the memory. Uh, well, for, first of all, a lot of the Pokemon's evolutions aren't next to each other, for one thing, in memory. Implying that they were reasonably created at different times, which we kind of know because they pretty much stated that Rhydon was the first Pokemon finalized. Rhydon? Yeah, Rhydon. Which is why there's Rhydon statues everywhere. Huh. <laughs> Um, she stole my missile expansion. Get her. This is the thing that tried to figure out how the uh, power up of uh, absorbing works. He's, so he just keep, keeps it there, just so that one day he can he stretch can Armstrong, it. smack Samus, apparently. Apparently. So that one day he can like, yeah, I'm gonna turn into Missile Guardian. I'm gonna be a hardcore boss. <laughs> oh, apparently not. Until he finds out that the missile. Uh, boss for any Metroid is always the first boss. And the worst. And the easiest. Yep. It's always, like in the 2Ds it was like a Chozo statue or something. What was the point of that thing? Um, since there was nothing there in the Dark World, I'm like, ah, I bet you there's something there in the Light World. So that's what I'm gonna <laughs> have to go do. So it carried over. 
Well, yeah, like I said, they pretty much... Anyway. What was I saying? I was talking about Pokemon. Oh, yeah. The evolutionary families aren't in the correct line. And there's some gaps where there's no complete Pokedex Pokemon entries. And so people glitch those Pokemon into their files and then transfer them to Gen 2 to see what happens. And you usually get... I don't know exactly how it works, but I've never done it, so... I'm talking completely out of my butt. Yeah, there's one... I wish that we had uh, a couple more viewers. Like, some people that really enjoy your stuff. Just to give us questions. Or anyone who's listening, give us, like, questions or something to answer. Would, if anybody who watches this, we would definitely appreciate questions. Maybe you like us just ranting, but we'd love to focus our, our comments towards something, because... Uh, you know, this series, now let us look back at, is... You know, it's a review series, but... Um, it's very, it's very casual, you know. It's, that's sort of the point. Yeah, we're not, we're not professionals, by any means. Us professionals. I'm not like some expert professional critic that criticizes the smallest amount of detail. The webbing there is, is impossible. But I can do no K Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, we appreciate that. Ha! <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. So yeah, um, we'd love Don't to. Don't be focus... silly. Don't be silly. It's my shotgun. Haha. <laughs> we'd love to to focus our our commentary uh towards anything, especially if you have specific questions about the series, because you know we we get distracted, as you clearly have probably noticed by now if you've watched us ever. Plus, and, everyone uh, likes getting having their answer, uh, questions answered. So you know there are probably a lot of specific things we might never bring up so you can definitely feel free to ask these questions about the series we're watching previous series previous seasons whatever you want to call them or well, even ask us stuff like anything well yeah, any not almost not anything well could be anything. but almost anything if, I, if, I, if, if we feel like we're not going to answer we just won't bring it up <laughs> with aaron almost anything with me anything <laughs> I, I would simply defer Mm, seems to be a spider problem in here. Yeah, a lot of uh, space spiders. I came in here, I'm like, oh, <laughs> dead Luminos. That means Sky Temple Key in the Dark World. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop with the Pokemon thing. Uh, yeah, the pa <sighs> I don't like the pacing of the game. A lot of back and forth. I don't think the backtracking is as good as in Prime 1. Well. Yeah, because I think in Prime 1 there was more like sub routes to go. Yeah, they they have, you know, you could actually reasonably miss the um, the backtracking shortcuts. There, there's um, I I access them because uh, there is a elevator lift from Agon to Torvis and from Torvis to Sanctuary, uh, but you could miss them. You're yeah, because really they're out of the way. They are a little bit. If you're not, if you don't, if you're not a very good explorer, you will definitely miss them. So I think the, I think the level design is just not as well polished. Um, overall, I don't know. I feel I feel bad for because it's not a bad game, but it's like I said, it's just kind of difficult to get through. Especially on replays. That's where it really begins to grind. Well, I'm going to assume, like, there's not as many memorable moments as the first one. Not, not as many. You know, I... Echoes is a little bit of a disappointment for me. Well, I'd say the main reason for all of that is because it has to contend with Metroid Prime 1. The Prime and, One is sort of is sort of a Halo level, Halo Combat Evolved level game. There's something about when it came out, and just all of that that just it came out at the right time. Yeah, it just and it looked there was damn some, good. There was like it just there was some unidentifiable unidentifiable spark that that made it something more than the sum of its parts. And we are about to actually get to the end of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. 
Oh wow. Oh damn. <laughs> hey Umos. We thought we'd come pay you a visit. Hey, where's my special lady that got me prime time? Is that the satellite? That is indeed a satellite. <laughs> what is this bowing supposed to be? I know, but they love bowing. <laughs> they do. I love how the camera still stays there. Even <laughs> though it's like he moves off screen. Yeah, but right as you press A, that's him going, Hey, over <laughs> here. Save the camera. <laughs> Apparently the Ing are not happy that we killed their dude. Oh. He's got finger monsters on his fingers. <laughs> He's detected ing activity in the Torvus sector. The enemy's on the move. You know, for at first, before he uh, has the ing on his hands, it looks like he's going, Well, I don't know where to go. You shouldn't <laughs> ask me. Oh. Or, at the... Why does Sam do that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's just like, Oh, my God, stick it out. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Maybe Samus was just like, Okay, Umos. I'll not do make it any again. sense. I guess I'll go over here. I guess you can't use your space bug magic. And did you have these weird shoulder pivots? Because I feel like your shoulder is just this giant spherical ball. Does that well, mean you could rotate your arm all the way around? What are you, an animal or, a, or an action figure? <laughs> are you a bionicle? He could be. Because you know how the Ink Smashers have the round pieces. Oh gosh. The Luminoths are Bionicles! They're living Bionicles. Gosh, for, for all those people who actually remember those days. Oh man, those were great days as kids. <laughs> LJ, that shows our age. The, the Bionicles and RuneScape. <laughs> we... We were children... Of that time. Of the late 1990s. 1990s to 2000s. Uh, Till then, don't forget to like, like and subscribe. Uh, share with your friends and write us a comment. Because I want to answer some goofy-ass questions. But anyway, thanks for joining us on this venture, The Wanderings of Samus. And we'll see you next time. And we're going to go to the swamp, apparently. Next time on Wandering Wastes. It's from George Bush. <laughs> he always said nuclear. Nucle hey, it's caught on because it sounds right to like. It sounds like yeah, that's a way to say it. It sounds like a kill streak <laughs> with nukes. That's why I never use it. It's not. It's not the proper word like nuclear. I, I, we've grown it's, up with too much. Too much Halo. <laughs> it's a nuclear. We've grown up with too much Halo. <laughs> kill tacular. Nuclear. <laughs> he doesn't. It's like right in my George face. Oh, that's <laughs> It does. Let me get my stack up in your <laughs> it face. It sounds like something that would be like a Halo game. <laughs>